Coming up to night at 10, we're looking ahead to your Easter weekend forecast. We'll tell you what to expect coming up. Plus, today is Vietnam War Veterans Day. We'll tell you how people in the Pine Belt are remembering the lives lost. And the Senate passed its Medicaid expansion bill this week, but will it help fill the coverage gap? Doctors weigh in tonight. Your news at 10 starts now. Tonight, WDAM 7 News is proud to be on your side with WDAM 7 News at 10. Welcome in on your Good Friday. Thanks for being here. I'm Michael Clark. We got a lot of things going on this weekend. Everything from some home baseball games for Southern Miss and William Carey to Easter Sunday, of course. So we're going to get right over to our weather team for what we need to know as far as how the weather is going to hold up. Patrick. Yeah, the weather's looking pretty nice here as we go into your Easter weekend. In fact, it was a beautiful afternoon here across South Mississippi today. As you can see uh, right now, the sun has set. It's already cooled down to 61 degrees in Summerall. It's not going to be as cold tonight as compared to this morning when we made it down to 39 degrees, but it's still a nice evening out there across the region. A few upper 50s. Purvis at 58, Oak Grove at 59, still 60 in Ellisville, and it's currently 64 in Collins. As we look across the region, we got clouds moving back in from the west. These are going to kind of sneak in for the overnight hours, but they'll be out of here for the most part uh, tomorrow afternoon, and that's going to leave us with mostly sunny skies. Temperatures starting off into the 50s, but we're going to warm up nicely, pushing 80 degrees by 3 o'clock. So the weather looks nice for any kind of Saturday activities that you may have. But what about Easter Sunday? A lot of activities going on. We got sunrise service, normal church service, Easter egg hunts. Well, we're going to break it all down for you hour by hour and give you those details. Plus, we're going to look ahead to next week's rain chances. All that and more coming up here in just a few minutes. All right, Patrick, we'll check back with you soon. Thanks. Today is National Vietnam War Veterans Day. Those who served are being honored across the country and right here in Hattiesburg. WDAM 7's Delaney Dukes is live in the studio tonight to tell us about a ceremony here in the Pine Belt this evening. On this day 51 years ago, the last of the U.S. combat troops departed Vietnam. And while many made it back to Hattiesburg, we had 21 men that did not. And today they were celebrated at Veterans Memorial Park. To honor the legacy of the Pine Belt men that never made it home from the war, each of their names were read, followed by... You ring a bell and the children, you're honoring their memory and thanking them for their service and also for the ultimate sacrifice than any man can make for his country, and that's to give his life. City leaders stressed the importance of celebrating our Vietnam War vets. When we came back from Vietnam, it just didn't happen at that time. Mayor Toby Barker explains once soldiers returned from the Vietnam War, they were not celebrated due to the unpopularity of the war. I think that regardless of whether the war is popular, if, if our men and women go off to fight, we owe them our support, we owe them our gratitude, uh, we owe them our admiration and respect. Gary Lyon is a Vietnam veteran that was given a quilt of valor. These handmade quilts are given to veterans that have been affected by a war. Lyon says he was honored to receive it and became emotional when he told me what he plans to do with his quilt. It's a special thing. I'll cover my wife with it. Um, she is a, uh, in the late stages of Alzheimer's, so special thing to me special thing to her. Don't forget the hug and the shake of the hand. I think the hosts the Hattiesburg Veterans Committee also hosts ceremonies for Pearl Harbor Day, POW MIA Day, Memorial Day and Veterans Day. All right, Delaney, thanks for that. The City of Laurel's Tourism Committee is coming up with new ways to spend tax dollars from tourists. For the past year, the city has been collecting a 3% tax from hotels and short-term rental properties. That money was used to promote Laurel and increase tourism there. Now, the committee is open to giving sponsorship awards to organizers who want to create and host events within the city to help with some of those tax dollars. Those organizers can get up to $2,500 in sponsorship funds. It can go from anywhere from $100 up to $2,500. But if you've got a good event and it's going to bring tourists to the city, then good chance that you can get to $2,500. Organizers must fill out an application for the event funding. We'll have more details online. Some people in Petal will be dealing with a boil water notice over the next few days. The mayor says it's because of a water line break on West 2nd Avenue earlier this week. 
It should take four to six days to fix. For now, city leaders say people living around West 2nd Avenue in North George should boil their water. We continue to keep you up to date on lawmakers' debates about how many of you who fall in the health care coverage gap could have Medicaid added as an option. Medicaid expansion is the phrase, but for a lot of people, it's more personal than political rhetoric. Courtney Ann Jackson explains tonight. We are the people. We are the ones that are looking at you saying, help us out. Lakeisha Preston falls within the current coverage gap. She's holding out hope that whatever version gets finalized will mean a new coverage option for her. No high out of pocket costs, um, less struggles on trying to make sure my son is able to be fed, housed, clothed. This will help out a whole lot for me as well as for my son. And then there are those who've been asking lawmakers to pass Medicaid expansion for years. Pediatrician Dr. John Godet was one of the organizers of the initiative related to Medicaid expansion that had to be scrapped after the Supreme Court ruling. He was also doctor of the day during Thursday's Senate debate. I'm amazed and um, very grateful for our leaders to be uh, moving this discussion forward. It's a long path and it's a rocky path. Uh, this has not been an issue that has even been on the table for discussion in the past. And I'm very glad that it is now. Doctors have consistently been among the voices calling for a change to close the coverage gap. President of the Mississippi State Medical Association, Dr. John Mitchell. Blessing is that we've brought it to the table and that we have finally discussed it and we're continuing to discuss it. But Mitchell says he prefers the House version of the bill. For a lot of reasons, one, it has much better e economic impact on the state uh, as well as the health care benefit. And uh, so we'll see where it plays out. Godet says it will take continued pressure to get a meaningful expansion bill across the finish line. But the governor needs to hear from you. Uh, the governor uh, is uh, has voiced his opposition to even this watered down Senate version of the bill. Courtney Ann Jackson, WDAM on your side. Now, if support remains after a final version is developed, lawmakers would have enough votes to override a veto from the governor. Churches in the Pine Belt are getting ready for Easter services. Leaders at Temple Baptist Church hope the weekend will bring in some potential new members. Over the past week, the church used its social media pages to reach out to more people. For the Christian faith, it's the pinnacle of, of everything that our uh, faith rests on. And so uh, we're expecting a really large crowd and a lot of guests. And so we're preparing as a church just to receive lots of people who maybe don't come to church that much. And we're just been planning a, a great service just to worship uh, a resurrected Savior. So we're looking forward to it. For those who cannot make it in person, Temple will be live streaming each of its services. We'll have a link on our website. And 19th Avenue Church is also celebrating Easter this weekend. The church is getting ready for its Easter production. Tonight, the cast wrapped up the last dress rehearsal. The live musical performance shows Jesus' last hours before his crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension. There are three performances, Saturday at 7 o'clock, Easter Sunday morning at 1030, and then Monday evening at 7 p.m. This will be their first production since the pandemic. This weekend we'll be presenting Easter Celebration 2024 here in our church. We're excited about it. It's been four or years since we've been able to do this, and we are excited about bringing it back to our community and to the Pine Belt. Admission is free, but they do recommend getting there early because seating is limited. Still ahead for you at 10 o'clock, cleanup continues in Baltimore after the key bridge collapsed earlier this week. We'll have details on the cleanup efforts after the break.